Diane and Derek here, rah, 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 and welcome back to another Huga chat across the kitchen table here in Copenhagen. Let me just get a wee bit uh, closer. There we go. We're going to be talking about Huga home, minimalism. I've got a classic Huga Danish craft for you involving these things. I'll also going to be talking about where we're putting our energy this week in the home, what we are cleaning, what we are decluttering. I've already started. Go and get yourself a nice a uh, hot cup of tea. Maybe if you're in the southern hemisphere you probably need some uh, chilled water. Ooh, and also, last but not least, our Huga Christmas weekly plan or our weekly worksheet. I've got a little sneak peek of that and I'm going to need your help with it. First things first, if you're following like me the Fly Lady system for cleaning your house, for, for keeping your life in order, this week we're working on zone three which is the bathroom plus one other room. I'll put the list there, that you can you can find these lists on my blog dianedenmark.com. The, the idea behind the list is just to give us a, an idea of what, what we can work on this week but remember first things first you've got to do your weekly upkeep clean and then you can add in a bit of zone cleaning. I've talked about it before and if you want me to hold your hand and clean along with you in, in zone 3 I've got tons of videos. I'll link them uh, up there and also down below. And the fly lady habit of the month is paper clutter. And I've told you that from a decluttering, I, I like to just go around the fly lady zones. It keeps it really simple. We don't need to uh, think about things. We don't overthink things because that's often a problem for us. That's, that's when the overwhelm comes in, when we've got all, you know, should I declutter there or there? And then we're sitting there with our cup of tea two hours later and we still haven't got anything done. So it takes out all the guesswork. We're, we're, we're working in zone three this week and I've already found some things to declutter. I, I didn't find any papers to declutter in the bathroom. <laughs> the only thing there would be toilet paper, but we, we declutter that naturally. So I took a look in the basement, that's also zone three, and I've decided I'm letting go of some cookbooks. And I used to have a real cookbook problem. I would have probably about three, four shelves full of cookbooks. I used to read them as kind of huga reading before I went to bed, but actually now I prefer uh, just my, my cosy crimes and cosy mysteries. Anyway, I've come up with um, three, so a wee bit of inspiration. Maybe you found some cookbooks last week when we were working on the kitchen zone. The only series that I have left of cookbooks is Nigella Lawson. I really used to enjoy her books, but I can see now that these ones, uh, this one, the How to Eat, and these are all big, heavy books. This one that wasn't that great, but I, I used to get them, you know, there would be like Christmas presents or birthday presents, but I'm ready to let go of those ones. And I'll check with my kids first, because they're both really good uh, home cooks. They might want them, and if not, they'll probably go to my friend Bettina, who's a bit of a cookbook junkie. Uh, and also this one, which is quite a funny one, which came from my mum's uh, church in, in Scotland. And you know when they have these kind of tried and trusted recipes? And it is quite kind of fun, and you can see it's got all the pancake recipes and Scottish stuff. But you know what? I never, I never use it, so it's time to let it go. So that was great. But when I was having a look through the cookbooks, oh, these are all going. This one, I'm going to read this week, and I'm going to decide if it's going to be kept or if it's going to be handed on. And if you like that with books, what I would re recommend to you is that you get a bag or a box um, a, a basket is really good. Put some of your books into a basket and this week you have to <laughs> force yourself to go through them. If by the end of the week you haven't gone through those books, it's time to let them go. All right, so, so you have to kind of set a deadline for yourself with going through these things. We're not getting overwhelmed with it, we're not decluttering all the books, but just, just take half a shelf worth and actually look through them this week. You can do that while you're watching the TV, looking at your favourite show. So that's going to be a little hygge activity for me this week. And maybe I'll get some uh, recipe inspiration. That, that was the next thing I was going to say to you. Yeah, in an effort to save money, because we're all saving the grid and we're all trying to use less electricity and less energy in general. Hubby and I, we are eating our way through the contents of an extra freezer that we have in the basement. Now I have the freezer up here, we've got the fridge freezer, you know, the kind of American fridge freezer here in the kitchen. And I've also got an old fridge which has got a kind of small chest freezer part on the top of it. 
that is enough for for the two of us and the old freezer we, we, i really need to let it go so we've been going through all the food so we've had some kind of weird combinations of things right now but i'm not buying any more uh, meat or vegetables for the freezer things like that we're, we're, we're working through them but if you have any ideas for what i can use the apples in the garden for where we're still kind of drowning in apples here and i'm giving them away as fast as i can to friends of mine who are using them to bake cakes and make apple compote and all those kind of things if you have any ideas of what i can use the apples for for savory dishes because i've got a couple of things that i like to make and one of them was a recipe that i learned in school economics class which was uh, pork chops with an apple sauce kind of creamy apple sauce with some mustard in it so I have used it for that recently and I also used the apples with the black pudding, you know, the blood pudding that I was also decluttering from the freezer. But if you've got any other good things for savoury things that I can do with the apples, let me know. And while we're on the subject of saving electricity, I, I don't know if, if you're the same as us, but at the moment it's almost become like a sport of how we can conserve energy and not switching on the heating in the house and everybody's wearing their woolly sweaters, their woolly jumpers and uh, using hot water bottles and uh, well, one of the other things that I've discovered is that I used to wear compression tights, uh, you know like travel socks and I, I've discovered, I've, I've gone back to wearing them again because it really helps my circulation and keeps my feet warm at home. I, I wear my indoor shoes and sometimes I wear a pair of extra socks, but uh, I found that, and, and you know me, no, no sponsored content, I really don't like sponsored content in videos. Any kind of travel socks that you can get, uh, and, and I've found some that are navy. Ah, sorry, I know that, I'll just show you them. They're, they're very, here we are all the way up there and that's my indoor shoes. Those really, really keep my feet warm during the day. And then moving swiftly on, a little craft that you can make with conkers. Now, these are our chestnuts. Uh, conkers, we usually call them in the UK. I think in the States you call them buckeyes. These are not the edible chestnuts. They're, they're not the ones that you make, um, you, you cut across in the top of them and then bake them in the oven and have them with salt and butter. Mm. Actually, I might get some of those this week when I'm uh, out doing my grocery shopping. These are the ones that just fall off the, the chestnut tree. And in Denmark, nursery kids, kindergarten kids, they, they have this kind of classic craft that they do. And I didn't know this before I came to Denmark in, uh, let's see, 22 years ago. But when my kids were at nursery, they would come home with these conquer uh, creatures. And it's little, you can make little creatures with them and you can make uh, spider shapes and little horses. I'm really pleased with the one that I made yesterday, which is like a little reindeer. Basically, the kids, they, they sit at nursery and they use something to poke holes in the, uh, in the chestnuts. And then once you've got a little hole in it, you can stick in um, matches. And it's usually a really good way to use, to use up spent matches. And then you can start building little creatures, as I said. And uh, last year, I made one, which was, a, which was a lot more spooky. And coming up for Halloween, if you're looking for a really good Netflix series to watch, but it's super, super creepy. I'm not usually into creepy stuff. A Danish series, which is called The Chestnut Man, Castanya Men. And it figures one like this, this little thing. And I made this last year. I kept it in my Halloween box, so this one's going to be coming out very spooky. But honestly, that, that Netflix series is not, not suitable at all for, for kids. It's super spooky. It is quite fun because it was actually the area that is meant to be, it's, it's where, where we live. So it's actually a bit, a bit too close for comfort. And if we leave aside the autumn hygge stuff and the apples and all the apple cakes, I want to give you a sneak peek of what's going to be happening for our Huga Christmas weekly plan. Now, I've come up with this this year because I know many of you, you print out all the planners and, and I still use the Fly Lady Christmas one, the Cruising Through the Holidays Christmas Control Journal. That, that works really well for me. But I know a lot of you, you print out the planners and you don't actually get past that first stage. And as I always say to you, if, if you want to get something done, whether that is exercise, whether that is menu planning, whether that is your daily routines, you need to have a time, a date and a place. 
And what we're going to be doing this year is that we're going to be checking in with each other weekly. And I've come up with a little checklist, a little worksheet where we can work along together, whether that is what we're buying in the way of groceries, self-care, little hygge projects that we can do together so that we're not getting overwhelmed with things but we're just working along week by week. It's, it's going to be really, really cosy in hygge. And I've got one section, I'm not quite sure what the last section should be, so over to you. If, if you can see something here that you think is missing, let me know. Well, we'll have a little think about it. The idea is that not next week, not week 42 as we call it in here uh, in Denmark, but week 43 that is when we will start our Huga Christmas weekly plan. And to answer a question that I've had on the past couple of videos, yes, this year I will again be doing the December Daily Dash. Now, for those of you who missed it last year, I'm in a group started by my friend Sarah Jane, you know, the fabulous Sarah Jane, who also does the Copenhagen Blue Tits. Every day of December, December 1, 2, 3, 4, all, Christmas Day, all the way through to Hogmanay, New Year's Eve, we did 5K every day. Now, I didn't run 5K every day. Most days I ran 3K and then made up the rest by walking. But it was just such a great idea. You really get a lot of exercise in, especially when it is dark and cold in Copenhagen. It was one of the things that really helped me get through winter last year. And it was really a lot of fun because every day we're out and we try and take some kind of photo and we post it in the group. And you don't have to be running 5k every day. You may just want to set a goal of doing a certain number of steps every day. But again, it's just kind of doing it together. We can all cheer each other on. So yes, that will be coming too. And again, my tea has gone cold. Hope you have a fantastic week in Fly Lady Zone 3. I am posting daily on Facebook and on Instagram. And I'll be showing you what I do for cleaning and for decluttering, there'll no doubt be more uh, books coming. Make sure to keep going daily with your self-care. I bought these beautiful, beautiful blooms when I was in the city centre on Friday and they're just, they're absolutely gorgeous. So all I've got left to say is live long prosper, may the Danish hygge and uhygge, uhygge is the opposite of hygge, and I'll see you very soon with a rap, rap, rap. Okay, bye for now.